me Crazy Joe, but now they can call me Fat Man. What up? Welcome back once again to the Necro Zoo. I am Bones. And in this one, let's go ahead and add one more figure to my McFarlane DC Multiverse collection. Now today we will take a look at Tim Drake Robin. Now this is the second time that we have received this version of the figure. The original was that red suited version. Everybody could universally agree that <laughs> Todd went kind of cheap that time because he just had the, the same parts on the body and just tried to paint them red and make it fit with the figure. But everybody knew that this version was going to come just because the way the first version was sculpted out. Now actually I do like the idea of that first red version but I think that it was executed rather poorly by McFarlane. Now this guy is starting to ship out from different online retailers and although there are still some problems with him he's a pretty nice looking figure if you could get past some of the not so popular choices that they made with this one but he does look pretty good and all in all he is a pretty nice looking figure well he looks pretty obsessed in the packaging and let's go ahead and take a closer look at him but first he does come with your standard black dc multiverse stand now of course these are not really needed but sometimes they do come in useful he also comes with his data fall card one of the nicer looking <laughs> cars that McFarlane has released. This is an image straight from the source material of the comics, Robin Reborn, and looks pretty good. On the back, you do have some information about Tim Drake. Now, of course, this is another version of Tim Drake. We have actually received a couple of versions. We also have the winged red robin version but what i would really like to see is the hooded red robin version which is one of my favorite designs of tim drake as red robin so if anybody asks like what figures i would like to see well that is a figure that i would like to see the hooded red robin i do have my dc classics version which i'm fine with but i would like an updated version but i'm not gonna lose any sleep over figures that I want that, you know, other people may not want. But as far as this figure goes, he also does come with some accessories. He comes with one Batarang, basically in the shape of like the Hush Batarang that came with the Batman. Has those like nice scalloped out wings for the Batarang. Now I'm not so sure Robin actually <laughs> uses a Batarang like this, but it does work good enough. Now he also comes with his staff. Now, pretty interesting because they chose this like thicker staff that I'm not really a fan of. The other version of, of Tim Drake actually came with like a thinner staff that had a little bit more like sectioned out parts to it and detail. And it just probably will look a lot better with this figure. And luckily I have an extra one that I can actually pour onto him. So it's cool to have that. You know what a lot of people don't think about is that this is good for fodder. Like, you know, if you don't really like a, an accessory or a weapon, you can always use it for parts to make different weapons or, or various other custom parts for other figures. So, yeah, pretty cool. We'll add it to the collection. But let's go ahead and take a closer look at this Tim Drake as Robin figure. Now, first impressions, I really like the colors. You have like a brightish green and a sort of almost orangey red. I'm not so sure how it matches up with the original release, but we'll take a look at that later on. And of course, <laughs> McFarlane did what everybody knew he was going to do, which was paint the flesh tones on the arms and match up the shape of the, of the emblem on the chest, where it's where the original one was just a circle on this like oval shaped symbol. This one actually matches the shape of the sculpt. 
right off the bat I could see slightly different cape and also different belt. That's the only other difference that sticks out to me. But if you were just a collector and you're not sure like what versions of Robins there are, you know, and you just saw this, this might be something that is eye catching and you would want to pick up just randomly. Or if you're a big Robin fan, you might want to pick this up for your desk and just put them up there with the staff. And this is a very good looking figure, but a lot of the details and the choices they made, of course, wouldn't be uh, pleasurable to a collector. Let's just say that. Take a look at the head scope. Now, it basically has the same shape and hair as the original release. The only difference I could see is you could kind of see his teeth, even though they look kind of weird. They're a little bit of a different shade. They're not really white. They're kind of like, I don't know, it looks pretty weird. And they didn't paint the teeth, you know, just plain white, which gives it a weird look because his mouth is kind of like half open or like cracked open. So I know they wanted to change it from the original version. And I guess they didn't want to go with a screaming head because a lot of people seem to not like those but just that <laughs> that little opening of the mouth just gives it a very unique but off-putting look that I'm not too sure if I really like it but this is the head that came with him so it's good enough for me like I said the hair is the same but one detail that you can see in here is that the shape of the domino mask isn't the same this one has more of like a diamond cut where the original one had those like little sort of horns on the side, those little pokey parts. I'm not so sure, but I think I prefer that head. So we'll, later on we'll do, you know, we'll do a little swap just to see what it looks like. But all in all, good looking head, besides a slight little <laughs> um, artistic choices that they went with. Let's take a look at the articulation. Now he does look down really well now I watch a lot of reviews and I have noticed that a lot of times people get him straight out of the package and they try and put his head up and they say that oh he has no uh, look up at all there's you know it's there's nothing I don't know why McFarlane can't get the articulation right but if you just warm him up a little bit or even force his head around it's not gonna break you really open up that range and he looks up really high. Now I didn't mod this or anything. I just hit it with the heat gun to like soften it up and it moves up perfectly. In fact, it looks up <laughs> a lot better than a lot of figures. So it's just weird to me that people right away take him out of the package and think that he's not gonna be tight or stiff a little bit. You gotta put in some love and massage it out <laughs> and loosen it up a little bit. But he does look up really well. You got right to left. And of course you could tilt his head for some attitude. Pretty nice. Moving down. Now this is what I'm talking about. I don't know why McFarlane went with this version of like the chest armor where he already had that three jokers chest armor that would actually fit from the red hood. It would actually fit perfectly on this body and it would be smooth and it wouldn't have so much of that armor look to it. And like I said, these are just decisions that are made that I'm not sure why they're made or like who makes the final decision, but you can go from having a perfect figure to having that one little thing and or like in the, the case of this figure, the various things, they could have made it a perfect figure and it's just not gonna do it. Like I said, I don't know why they chose this armor plating sort of body and it also, it makes him look a lot more bulky than he should be because this is actually more of a very thin, smaller framed figure. But for what it is, if you don't know any of that, it does look cool and it does actually work with this figure. Going down to the belt, like I said, it has a different belt. The other one was more of a pouch belt. Well, this one is kind of more of like a capsulated, more streamlined belt. I'm not even sure really which one fits with this version of Robin, but I'm gonna take it that this is the 
belt that matches up more with the Tim Drake oh. Robin in this version of the Robin suit. Let's take a look at the waist articulation. You have side to side, pretty smooth and a lot of range. You got that full tilt to whirl at the waist. You got a lower waist swivel, upper chest swivel. You could twist them, get them in some action poses. Let's check out the crunch. Now he does have a slight crunch and although it is not much, especially for this armored up midsection, it's there. Like he can lean forward. <laughs> I mean, it's not a crunch, like a Spider-Man crunch, but I do get it where people say that it's Robin, he's more lean, he's more acrobatic. He should be able to crunch like pretty much a 90 degree angle and look down to his toes. But for all intents and purposes, he does have a slight crunch. Of course, he could lean back, or usual with McFarlane figures. Uh, he can gap up a little bit, but he can push it and cover up that gap, so not a big problem. Let's check out the T-pose. Could get him in a T-pose pretty simply. Uh, that's as high as he's gonna go with the way the cape is shaped. You got arms above the head, pretty nice and then we'll go ahead and move down. Now, a lot of people had a big problem with the trunks because they kind of ride up and if you push them down, it works really well, but as soon as you start manipulating them, the trunks kind of, <laughs> kind of want to ride up again and what happens is you kind of capture it in between the gap of the thigh and like the that you know undercarriage that McFarlane uses for the hips so it's a little bit tricky what you could do is actually glue like a piece of plastic or fodder underneath the little carriage part and that would actually keep the trunks down by themselves without having to go up and we shouldn't have to do this this is something that they should take care of and you know the design and and the way they execute the figure but it is the way it is in our hand and that's an easy fix to keep the trunks from riding up so if you have any kind of customizing skills or it's not really that hard just to cut a little strip of plastic and glue it to that little undercarriage piece that would pretty much fix that problem that he has I think that they just chose the wrong little piece that like snaps into the abdomen that holds the hips. They just chose the wrong one. They should have chose a longer one or designed a longer one to keep the trunks from riding up. Let's take a look at the thighs. He has actually a pretty generous thigh swivel. And what this actually does is allows you to move the foot from side to side without having a pretty ugly looking thigh cut and break up the sculpt of the thigh. Now, if you heat this up, you can actually open it up a little bit more to get more range in the thighs, but that's up to you. You don't necessarily have to do that. You can kick up pretty high. You can also kick back and do not be afraid because since these trunks are made of rubber, they do flex out of the way. And when you put them back to their original position, the trunks go back to their original form. Now these trunks are kind of, I don't want to say weird, but <laughs> they are kind of extra soft and they actually have some wrinkle design in there that it kind of feels like foam a little bit. Like it's kind of weird to say, not, not necessarily styrofoam, but that more like softer foam that could have like wrinkles in it. And that's kind of what it feels like. And surprisingly, it kind of matches up with the texture of the cape, but we'll look at that later on. But yeah, the trunks have like a little bit of softness to them, which I mean, I, <laughs> I don't know as of now if it's good or bad, but we'll see in the future. But the way it looks, looks cool because it looks a little bit more realistic. Now, before we go, let's take a complete look at the lower body of course he has those martial arts style cut boots with the toe cuts in them some nice kick pads that actually have a lot of cool detail and one thing i didn't notice on the orange one 
until I actually got this one in hand. And that is that it has a really fine little texture, like a little grain to the suit. And basically is just the thigh, part, like the leg part, the green part. But you could feel it and you can actually see it if you get it in a certain light. You could see the little grain that it has, which is a pretty cool little detail that they added in there. Take a look at him from the bottom. He has some <laughs> pretty interesting tread and some identifying marks. Moving up the back, you got the back of the boots, some, you know, nothing big in scope work up the legs, the back of the trunks, where <laughs> his butt is actually armored up, which is pretty interesting. That belt goes all the way around, which is nice. And then you have the back of the figure. Pretty nice. Now, like I said before, the cape is pretty interesting. He has the yellow painted underneath. If you look at the black portion on top, it's kind of weird. It has those same little kind of like distressed wrinkles that, that they show on the trunks. And at first you could think that it's like the way they painted it or the material is like really cheap, but I don't think that's actually the case. I think they're actually sculpted in wrinkles that are made like that to make it feel a little bit more like real cloth. So that's a pretty nice detail that McFarlane added there. So all in all, he's pretty nice. I like the overall design and color scheme, but of course some of the detail choices were not the best that they chose for this figure. I mean, you could still pose them, get them in some cool poses, add the batarang, add the staff, to, to you know get the most out of this figure as I said before I would actually add this version of the staff which came with the red version so I don't know why they switched it up and they gave you this more blocky I think this this kind of came with that other red robin the the winged one this one and it doesn't fit really well in the hand and it's kind of thick but this one is just perfect to go with this figure so that's what I'm going to do since I have an extra one. Now, the reason I have an extra one is because the original version that I have here, this is actually my custom version where I changed out the arms and added some fists. You know, I made the fist to give him a little bit more of choices when I'm posing him. He doesn't necessarily have to have only the two gripping hands, which of course this these figures actually came with. I like the fist. I tried to match the paint as best as I could. It's pretty close. Now right off the bat you can see the different versions of the cape. That's like one of the only big details besides the belt. Now this newer version, if you look at the collar, the black paint isn't too bad but the yellow paint is really like sloppy. It has a lot of you know paint going over into the black and it just looks pretty dirty, so I might end up cleaning that just to clean it up a little bit and make it look a little bit more presentable. I mean, <laughs> one more time, we shouldn't have to, but it is something that I choose to do to make my figure look a little better. And like I said, the collar just, uh, the paint looks a little bit sloppy, so that's another detail that wasn't too nice. But if you get them next to each other, you can see that they're basically the same figure with slight little details that are different. Now I really like this head sculpt and I did do a swap so let's take a look at that. This head sculpt actually looks way better <laughs> on this newer version of Tim Drake as Robin. I don't know what it is about it, it just looks better. I don't know if you paint this domino mask black instead of green, maybe that's the, what makes it different. But then again he has that little like cracked open mouth which is kind of off-putting but eh, all in all I'm pretty happy with it you could see that they are exactly the same size and that's where we get into another negative about this figure is the scaling now I have here the red robin with the wings and they should have went more with this body size body like shape for this version of Tim Drake Robin as you can see he's like a little bit shorter and more leaner and I think they could have worked it better by using like this figure's basic body size and doing this costume design. 
I know it didn't happen. I know we're not. <laughs> it's not going to happen. But if anybody in McFarland should have known, they should have looked at it and said, you know what? We should use this same body as a base to build this Tim Drake because this one is kind of too bulky and a little bit tall. Now, I say a little bit tall because I don't think he's even taller than the teen figures, like the John Kent body. He's even shorter than those bodies, but it's still a little bit tall for a Tim Drake. Just in scale-wise, they should have made him a little bit shorter now. I actually have one more uh, Tim Drake figure, but this is DC Direct. Now, of course, DC Direct has, you know, six points of articulation, so they kind of take us back into the Dark Ages with that articulation but you could see how what size he is he's like shorter than this one and he would actually fit well with some versions of batman and scale up pretty well because this is more of the size that you want with tim drake now he could be a little bit taller you know like this much but it would still fit a lot better in the scaling which of course mcfarlane has a problem with now i do have my modded up batman nightfall batman and i modded him up by doing the phi lift which is real simple you could do it and it doesn't you know change the figure in any drastic way but as you could see he's like a little bit more taller than the standard out of the package batman would actually <laughs> be barely taller than him but when you mod it like this he's actually a little bit taller and scaled up a little bit better but I still think that this winged red robin height would have worked better with this Tim Drake robin now just for fun let's throw in this other little robin this creepy guy just for some scales see how it, he looks with these guys and actually it looks pretty well all in all it fits in pretty well they did a pretty good job but as always some of the little attention to detail is what's keeping McFarlane from pleasing everybody or a majority of the collectors. They just need to tighten up some of the things and this line is gonna, you know, keep going and we'll get opportunities to get a lot more figures. Now that's another thing, figure selection, you know, character selection. The bad part about that is what you want is not necessarily what I want and what McFarlane has planned is not necessarily what anybody wants. But like me, I really want a Mr. Miracle. I've wanted him since the beginning, but I don't go to sleep at night worried about it or thinking that we're not going to get it. It's going to happen. I just let it happen. And I would rather it happen later on down the line when we're getting a, a, you know, a little bit more better articulation, better scaling, better accessories. And then I want my Mr. Miracle because as we know, the figures that came out before were, you know, <laughs> a little bit rough. And like I said, not all of us want exactly the same figures. But anyways, pretty cool. He's going to look cool up there on the shelf. I'm happy to have this guy. I'm interested kind of to making a custom version of this Tim Drake. So if I do that, I will make a video on it. But you guys keep hunting out there. Keep collecting. Keep customizing. And I will see you on the next one. You used to call me Crazy Joe, but now they can call me Batman.